I am Dr. Nidhi Khare. In today's lecture, you'll understand how centralization and decentralization play a role for employee attitudes and behaviors. So, what is centralization? Centralization is the degree to which decision making authority is concentrated at higher levels in an organization. Now, in centralized companies, Many important decisions are made at higher levels of the hierarchy. Whereas in decentralized companies, decisions are made and problems are solved at lower levels by employees who are closer to the problem in question. Now tell me, as an employee, where would you feel more comfortable and productive? Think and answer. Will you feel more comfortable in a centralized organization or in a decentralized organization? Students, if your answer is decentralized, then you are not alone. Decentralized companies give more authority to lower level employees, resulting in a sense of empowerment. Decisions are often faster and employees believe that decentralized companies provide greater levels of procedural fairness to employees. And this is why job candidates are more likely to be attracted to decentralized organizations. Now because centralized organizations assign decision making responsibility to higher level managers, there are greater demands on the mental and physical capabilities of CEOs and other high-level managers. But despite many perceived disadvantages, centralization may lead to more efficient operations, particularly if the company is operating in a stable environment. Now many companies find that the centralization of operations leads to inefficiencies in decision making. For example, in the 1980s, Caterpillar suffered the consequences of centralized decision making. At the time, all pricing decisions were made in the corporate headquarters in Peoria, Illinois. This meant that when a sales representative working in Africa wanted to give a discount on a product, what they had to do was they needed to check with headquarters and headquarters did not always have accurate or timely information about the subsidiary markets to make an effective decision. The dramatic reorganization of the company sought to avoid problems such as these. Now at the other end of the spectrum, organizations can suffer from extreme decentralization. For example, some analysts believe that the Federal Bureau of Investigation, that is FBI, experiences some problems. Because all its structure and systems are based on the assumption that crime needs to be caught after it happens. Now over time, this assumption led to a situation in which instead of Following an overarching strategy, each unit is completely decentralized and field agents determine how investigations should be pursued. In this case, it has been argued that due to the change in the nature of crimes, the FBI's need to gather accurate intelligence before a crime is committed and this requires more centralized decision making and also strategy development. So you see, hitting the right balance between decentralization and centralization is a challenge for many organizations. At the Home Depot, the retail giant with over 2000 stores across the US, Canada, Mexico and China, one of the major changes their former CEO Robert Nardelli did was to centralize most of its operations. What happened before the transition? 
Home Depot store managers made a number of decisions autonomously and each store had an entrepreneurial culture. Nardelli's changes initially saved the company a lot of money. For example, for a company of that size, centralizing purchasing operations led to big cost savings because of the company could negotiate significant discounts from suppliers. At the same time, many analysts think that the centralization went a bit too far, leading to the loss of the service-oriented culture at the stores. So you see, hitting the right balance between decentralization and centralization is very important and is a very big challenge at the same time for the organizations. Thank you. In the next lecture, I'll be taking formalization.